I was thinking of uh, the movie Elf when he goes into the mail room. He says, why does everybody here look like they want to hurt me? Uh, that's exactly what this looked like. They wanted to hurt me or kill me. And every word I spoke, it just looked like I was feeding them a rat sandwich. So there's something I call the three agreements. Might put a book out there on agreements, but uh, these are my three. The three agreements. So the first one is we agree on the vision. And this is not simply like clarity of the vision. We actually agree on the vision, meaning they didn't just get my vision. So early on, I talked to doctors who do this all the time, is we're like, well, I'm a visionary and I'm going to give the staff that vision. That's not an agreement. That's not the first agreement, agreeing on the vision. That's telling them your vision. I realized after a few years of really struggling with my team and keeping them inspired and motivated that you know I was just jamming my vision down their throat, even though it was a great vision, you know, serve God, save lives, change the world. It's a great vision, but to them, you know, it's just the thing that Dr. Ben makes us listen to and do. So I realized I need an agreement. What do you want the vision to be? I want the staff to feel like they've discovered their purpose. They get to fulfill their purpose, satisfy their ambitions in my clinic, not me give them their purpose like I had been doing for years or give them the vision. So we agree on the vision. So how do you do that? We start by discussing the crisis and the different things we do in the office that help. So it's a discussion. It's not me telling them. It's a collaboration. So COVID, economic challenges, depression, sleeplessness, hormonal issues, pregnancy issues, you know, all the things that are out there, we talk about it. And well, how do we help those things? And it's great to hear the staff. Well, we, cause we love people. We support them. We call them and make sure that they make their appointments. They get adjusted and, and see miracles. The staff gives you this feedback. We don't, again, pour it on them, expect them to eat it and drink it. So the team is talking about the great work that we do. Okay. So What's a vision? What's a good vision for us then? And let them say, well, you know, what if we, you know, saw a thousand people? What if we had three clinics? What if we were working with all the churches and all the schools and all the sports teams and reach the whole city and eventually reach the whole world this way? Let, let's do lots of events, you know, get, let them cast a vision for all that we can do to save lives the way they've just described. We save lives and make a difference in our community. So that's the first agreement. We agree on the vision. Again, because we're discussing it and coming up with it together, not because I dumped it on them. So for a lot of you, some of you might even be arguing with me right now because you've just never done it this way. This might almost be mind blowing, but, but that's how you cast vision. It's an agreement. The second is we agree on the plan. So if the, if the vision, for example, was we want to be adjusting 400 people a week, we adjust 250 now, we want to get to 400. Uh, we'd like to be doing an event every month a big event to, to tell the world about how we could stop COVID. Uh, we want to collect $100,000 a month. We want everybody to be making like an extra $5 an hour. So, you know, we lay out all these things that we wanted to hit. So, okay, what's the plan? So if the plan was to get to 400 a week, then maybe we decided part of that plan. And again, I would ask my team, how many new patients do you think we would need? 40. Okay, so part of the plan is we agree that we need 40. And we agree that 400 is a good number. So then how do you get to 40? You know, that's, a, that's maybe we're only doing 20 or 15 new patients now. How do you get there? So the marketing person says, well, you know, we'll, we'll do um, a talk every week in the community. Okay, great. So, so we're in agreement. You are going to set up a talk every week in the community. You feel good about that. You, you, do you know how to get there? Great. So 40, one talk a week, you're going to follow that plan. Obviously, I'm going to support you. Our whole team's going to support you every way we can. So we've agreed on a plan to get to that 40. Somebody else says uh, for um, collections, they say, well, if we could sell $2,000 a week in supplements, then you know, that adds another $100,000 this year. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay. Everybody agree with that? Great. Everybody understand why that would add value to the community, serve God, save lives? Great. So how do we get there? What's that plan look like? Again, we come to an agreement, come into alignment. A lot of you are pushing, trying to create urgency without alignment. And just think of a subluxation. You push a spine harder when it's out of alignment 
you just create a bigger subluxation and more damage to the nervous system. Same thing in the clinic. If we're out of alignment on the vision, out of alignment on the plan, and we push, things just break. People get more frustrated, and then we blame them. We often will say, well, I, I just have bad staff. Well, it could be, but we also could just be out of alignment. Like I said, I had a staff member that not only was out of alignment, but was trying to stop me. So that, that's got to go. Uh, but who knows? I was a lousy leader back then when I started. Maybe we just hadn't created a, a, you know, a, an equal vision. Finally, the third agreement is with them. What's in it for me? So they might agree on the vision. We came up with it together. They agree on the plan. Yeah, we're going to have to do A, B, and C to get 40 new, hit 400 a week to make 100 grand a month. We're, there's a lot of things we, we agree on as to the strategy and the plan to get there that we're going to you know, hold each other accountable to every week for the rest of the year. But they're still resistant. Because in the end, like you heard me mention a moment ago, they're going, well, this sounds really great for you, Dr. Ben. Sounds like you'll make a lot of money. Sounds like you'll be famous. You'll have a big practice. You, the whole community will love and respect you. But what about me? So we have to make it really clear. And it's not just the economics. People, people are not actually inspired or motivated by money like you might think. Money is more about, of course, they need it. People like it. You know, that's, it's a lot of reason to show up to work in the morning. So I don't want to discount the value of money and, and making sure that, you know, that they have an opportunity to make more. But the bigger thing is more out of fair exchange. So it would be unfair for Dr. Ben to kill it this year and for them to be roughly the same or exactly the same. So that seems unreasonable. So all of a sudden there's an unreasonable or unfair exchange so we're out of alignment once again. There's not an agreement on what's in it for them. So I have to look into things such as what motivates them. What do they see as fair? Uh, how do they you know, want to get paid through bonuses or, or raises? You know, what, you know, I want to make sure we're in alignment on all of this and what's in it for them, and it's clear to them. Something I say to my team that has worked really well for me for quite a long time is that we will never, it will never just be good for Dr. Ben, never. If it is a better month in my business, you will have a better month financially as well. So there's no way I'm making more money without you making more money. You are getting a percent of the things that we do here as it grows. Now, if it's flat, both of us will make the same money. But if it grows, you don't get this deal at Disney, Universal Studios, you know, just the businesses around me. You don't get this at the attorney's office. You don't get it at Walmart or Target. You know, you got your salary and that's it. Maybe some sort of Christmas bonus. But here, if we make more money, you make more money. That's a deal you don't get anywhere else. And so, so that's what's in it for you. 